I'm Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Our lecture today is called Buddhism, Kevin Costner, the Buddhist Saga of the Earth. In the 15th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, it speaks about the Bodhisattvas of the Earth. The Bodhisattvas of the Earth, they are the people, or we are the people, who are going to make the real change in this world. Now, let's understand that in the world of Buddhism, ladies and gentlemen, they are giving you a lot of gain. Now, when you deal with the Japanese organizations, for example, the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, and Nichiren Shu, and many of the Asian religions, ladies and gentlemen, you are dealing with gain. See, these guys talk a good Buddhism story, and they have you believe that they are practicing Buddhism, but when you really study Buddhism, you are studying, you are getting game because they are gaming you. You see, Nichiren, well not necessarily Nichiren, but in the Buddhist teachings, there is something called the three proofs. They are document proof, theoretical proof, and actual proof, or rather proof of fact. Now, when you look at the Buddhism as it is being taught in the world, and especially as it's being taught in America, and you deal with the three proofs, Buddhism really is a lousy religion because it does nothing to promote what they say, world peace or or a way of bringing humanity together. Some of the worst examples that you will find in Buddhism actually comes from the Buddhists themselves. Now imagine, now take me for instance. There is, in the whole world of Buddhism, there is not one single active Buddhist Sangha in the world. Now can you imagine of all the people of African descent and there is not one single black Buddhist single, I'm talking single, I mean an active Buddhist community among people of African descent. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the facts, something is wrong with that picture. You have to go into history. Now it's Black History Month in America that I'm doing this lecture in 2015. Now, Buddhism is actually black history because it was the black people or the indigenous people of India that actually started Buddhism. Now, when you look at the history of Buddhism and you look at the ancient statues of Buddhas, all of the ancient statues and images of the Buddhas is that of a man of African descent because India where Buddhism started was formerly known as Eastern Ethiopia and the indigenous people of India were the Nagas. The Nagas or who later became known as Dravidian. Now let's go back to our lecture. Again our lecture is called Buddhism Kevin Costner and the Buddhist Stavos of the Earth. Now, one of the great things that has happened, ladies and gentlemen, is that the people who can fight and the people who can really teach Buddhism is going to be the Buddhist Stavos of the Earth because Buddhism has been hijacked by Brahman. Now, the way that you know that Buddhism was hijacked by Brahmins, you will not see any type of black culture in history. It's going to be sanitized. It's going to be an all-white religion. Buddhism is the first 
egalitarian religion in the world. And yet in all of Buddhism, you don't have not one single black singer where black people are practicing Buddhism. Something is wrong with that picture. Now, in order to deal, in order to challenge these, this racism in Buddhism, it takes the Bodhisattvas of the earth. Now, one of the Bodhisattvas of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Kevin Costner. You see, one SGI African American leader, this guy's name is Bobby Hudson, he says, man, until you can show me uh, evidence or success like that of Daisaki Kata, I will never listen to you. I said, well now, Bobby and you SGI Negroes and people like yourself, I may not be able to show it to you, but I could show you a Bodhisattva of the earth. You see, one of the games that they run on you, they says, oh, let's not talk about race. Oh, don't bring race up. Don't talk about race, even though the greatest news stories of 2014 was Black Lives Matter. The greatest news stories of 2014 was the fact that white police officers was killing unarmed black men. And it's the Bodhisattvas of the earth that stood up and fought against such things. Now, let's get back to Kevin Costner. You see, when it comes to economics, white people dominate the money. White people are in power in the world, for the most part. Now, but what happens is, you got the good people. Now, when you look, and I want you to look at Daisaki Kato, and I want you to look at the high priest, uh, what is it, Nick and Sean, and I want you to look at these people. Now, when you look at these people, and you look at their Buddhism, and you really examine their Buddhism, what you're going to find is racism because you would not find one iota of black history inclusive of their religion, inclusive of their teachings. And the reason that you don't find any black history inclusive because they are Brahmins and they practice a form of institutional racism. Now, how do you challenge something like that? It's very difficult because you got Negroes who standing up to, oh, okay, is so great. Oh, the priest is so great. Because they don't deal with the Bodhisattvas of the earth. Now, let's get back to Kevin Costner. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Costner, I remember years ago, and I was dating this beautiful SGI leader. She's still a top leader in the SGI. And she said, let's go to the movie. I remember years ago, and we went and saw this Kevin Costa movie called Dancing with Wolves. And when I saw that movie, and I saw that Kevin Costner made a movie that was fair to the Native Americans, I said, now, this is the man who is a very special man. Now, just today, right now in America, where while people are talking about race, are talking about what's going on in America, Kevin Costner decided to make a movie. The movie is called Black and White. Now, let's listen. These SGI Negroes said, oh, we not to talk about race. White folks said, we don't talk about race. But what did Kevin Costner do? Kevin Costner understood. He made a movie called Black and White. Now, the director and writer of the movie, Mr. Mike Bender, he had seen Kevin Costner five, five movie scripts he turned them all down, but when Kevin Costner saw the movie and saw the script for the movie Black and White, 
He says, I will do this movie because I want to make a difference in the world. He wants to make a difference in the world, ladies and gentlemen, because he is a Potestopher of the earth. See, the Potestopher of the earth manifest their true entity. It is in the second chapter of the Lotus Sutra that teaches us that all phenomena manifest its true entity and that they express the ten aspects. The first aspect is going to be appearance. Nature, entity, power, influence, inherent cause, relationship, latent effect, manifest effect, and the consistency of the beginning to the end. Now, you do not see such a phenomena manifesting itself from these Japanese organizations. What you see manifested is a racist culture, a, a Buddhism that's sanitized, a Buddhism of non-inclusion, a Buddhism of separation, a Buddhism of caste. Whereas people say, well, I'm a Nichiren Shoshu Buddhist. In Nichiren Shoshu, they only have Japanese priests. This is racism, ladies and gentlemen. This is racism. But when you deal with Kevin Costner, and you want to talk about Buddhism. Now, let me bring one thing in understanding the teaching. Now, if you really want to understand Buddhism, you have to study. Now, in the Go Show, it's called the Gift of Rice. And I often repeat this, but this is what it says. Now, it says this. When the great teacher, Milo, compared these passages with one of the six volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads, quote, No worldly affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meaning and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their meaning is still shallow and fails to approach that of Lotus Sutra, they relate to secular matters in terms of Buddhism, Whereas, the Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. Unquote. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand is that secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. So, when we look at the Kevin Costner movie, Black and White, that is Buddhism. Now, what Kevin Costa wanted to do and what he says in interviews, he wanted to leave something for the future generations. He wanted to leave a legacy. And what this man did was he understood that the white power structure is not going to put no money into no movie about no black and white. It is a controversial subject, but Kevin Costa sat down with his wife and he told his wife, sweetheart, I must do it. And this man put $10 million of his own money to make the movie black and white because he want to make a difference. Now, let me give you a contrast. SGI's Daisaka Ikeda has invested $4 billion dollars in America and you don't even know they exist. I mean he put four billion dollars and he's never did anything to bring about the unity of humanity. Only thing he does, he put his money out there to have a building or a bridge or put his picture up to ego trip, but that's how Kikeda has never done anything for humanity or he never thought about putting a school for underprivileged people. He put all this stuff out there for the folk that's got money because he deals like a Brahmin. He deals in caste and he deals in class. Now, what I want to do right now, I want you to stop and we're going to look at Kevin Costner on the Steve Harvey show and let him explain to you what he did, why his movie is fair, and we're going to come back and put a close on this lecture. This movie comes at an interesting time in this country. There's so much that's going on that's race-related. What can people learn from this movie? 
Well, I, you know, I didn't make it for this timing, you know, didn't try to anticipate the curve. I just, I think we go to the movies and we want to see ourselves and we want to see the truth. And when I made this movie, I did not back away from any of the language that was used. Those aren't easy words to say. I didn't really want to say them, but by God, I wasn't going to make this movie without saying it because that's what needed to be said. And life will judge you if you're fair. And we were fair with this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really was, man. Folks, uh, listen, Black or White opens today nationwide. Flat out, go see it. You will not be disappointed, man. You see Kevin Costa. Now, if I, as an African-American, brought up the story of race and I tried to deal with the subject, oh, man, white folk would pounce all over me, call me racist. But when some, when their own, like Kevin Costner stand up, all them racists can do is shut up because they can't mess with Kevin Costner. See, cause Kevin Costner is a bad white boy. And what I like about Kevin Costner, he and I are about the same age and we actually born in January. His birthday is like a couple of days after my birthday. So I like that about Kevin Costner. I like the fact that Kevin Costner can get down. Do, how many of you remember, man, the body God? Look, Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston was so awesome in the body God. And notice how Kevin Costner in the movie The Body God showed the value of culture. For example, Daughter Pardon wrote the song, I Will Always Love You. And that was a scene in that movie that's at this country in Western Bar. And Witness says, wow, the song is so country. But in the end of the movie, Whitney Houston showed what it means to have a cultural integration. She took that song, I Will Always Love You, that was written by a white woman, country and western singer, Daughter of Harden, and Whitney blew it out of the box. I mean, the record sold about 100 million copies because what? Whitney Houston sung that song because that girl, the sister girl, put the soul into that music. And when Whitney Houston had her funeral, Kevin Costner was right there because he is real. He is real because he is a Buddha Stava of the earth. He understand that in life it's more than just being success. But you must use your success to help other people. You must use your success to help humanity. And Kevin Costa is doing some things that some of our lousy African American athletes and successful people refuse to do. These guys get these positions and they make a lot of money and they do nothing to advance humanity. Even a many of our African Americans, life would be a whole lot better if some of these chumps would do something or have the power or the energy or the conviction to make a difference. But the reason that Kevin Costner made a difference is because Kevin Costner is a Bodhisattva of the earth. He is one of us. Understand that Gosho says that all non-Buddhist teachings are not non-Buddhist teachings, but they're actually Buddhist teachings. So Buddhism is not sitting up in some mountain meditating or waiting on some Japanese to come from Japan and teach you Buddhism. Buddhism equals everyday life. But anyway, let's put a closure on this. Now, one of the things I want to bring forward, and one of the things that has not been taught by the Japanese sects, and that we Nietzsche Buddhists chant Nam Yoho or Nam Yoho and Get Kyo, and we really don't talk much about the Dharma, uh, but it's actually called Dharma. Now, let's look at what the Dharma means. It says, the Dharma. You see the Buddhist symbol or the Buddhist logo of the Eightfold Paths. Now, the Eightfold Paths 
is actually the Buddhist teachings and everything about the Buddhist teachings is the Dhamma. Now the first one is right view, right intention. Now the right view leads to right understanding and right intention leads to right liberation. But that's a part of wisdom. The second part of it is ethical conduct, that is right speech, right action, right livelihood. And the third tier is called mental development. That is right effort and right mindfulness. And number eight is right concentration. Now, whether you are a Buddhist or you practice the Buddhist teachings or not, inherently or intuitively, you can do what? Right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. That is the Buddha Dhamma. And that is what Kevin Costner practiced because he is a Bodhisattva of the earth. Let's bring this lecture to a close. I would like to close by sharing with you a writing that was put on rocks thousands of years ago by King Ahsoka. King Ahsoka was one of the great Buddhist leaders who had Buddhism and he sent missionaries all around the world and what King Ahsoka did was he carved his writing in edicts. It's called the Ahsoka Edicts and one of the things that King Ahsoka did not do he did not use the word Sanskrit because he was a black guy, he was from the Soka Empire, he was black. He didn't use Sanskrit like SGI, Nichun Shoshu, Nichun Shu. The Soka edicts are carved in Karasi script or in Pali. They're not in Sanskrit. The Lotus Sutra is not in Sanskrit. But let's bring this lecture to a close. Now, understand what he wrote on the Soka Edic. Now this is one from the Edic at Gimuri in Guzarat. Now, and this is what he said, let's bring this lecture to a close, to a conclusion rather. He says, now it is conquest by the Dharma that the beloved of the gods considers to be the best conquest. And conquest by Dharma has been won here on the borders even 600 yanas away where the Greek king Antiochus rules beyond where the four kings named Potomy, Antigonus, Magus, and Alexander rule. Here, the king's domain among the Greeks, the Kabojas, the Navakas, Everywhere people are following the beloved of the gods instructions in Dhamma. Everywhere beloved of the gods envoys have now not been these people too having heard of the practice of the Dhamma and the ordinances and instructions in the Dhamma given by the beloved of the gods are following it and will continue to do so. This conquest has been won everywhere and gives great joy, the joy which only conquest by Dharma can give. But even this joy is of little consequence. The love of the God considers the great fruit to be experienced to the next world to be more important. I have had this Dharma edict written so that my sons and great grandsons consider making conquest of the Dharma only for that bears fruit in this world and in the next. What King Ahsoka is saying that by us following the Dhamma, like Kevin Costner followed the Dhamma, that is the way to change the world by following the Dhamma, by bringing people together. I'm Anthony Ap Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Women's World Association. Thank you very much. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord I'll suit your way. I pray every day to do my best to practice peace and love and read.
gets back I can tell him on my knees And I pray every day I pray the Lord will suit your way Devotion to the mystic law and cause and effect teaching I believe and wisdom teaching I can tell on my knees and I pray every day I 